So the latest Junji Ito manga was released over here, Remina. Amazon took a few extra days to deliver it to me, but that's besides the point. I have it now, and the presentation is beautiful, like most of Viz's Ito's outputs. Beautifully colored illustrations act as bookends. That's kind of nice, I like that. Now, this isn't a compilation like we've seen in the past. It's one complete story, but not a very long one. So getting into a bit of the story, in Remina, a professor discovers a galaxy through a wormhole. Now, 30 years later, he discovers an unknown planet. He officially names it after his daughter, since it was discovered on her 16th birthday, Remina. However, once she gets recognized as being the source for this new discovery, she starts to get treated like a rock star. You have to love fiction. Someone like this would never get this much attention in the real world. A YouTuber would probably be stopped on the street more often than some astrophysicist. Sad, isn't it? Well, rather than fighting all of the attention, she eventually enters the world of entertainment and becomes a big hit, thanks in part to her father's popularity, but also her polarizing beauty. Well, things seem to go well for a bit, until it's noticed that the planet Remina is actually approaching the Earth at a rapid pace. It pulls a Sephiroth and destroys planets on its way, and of course, panic spreads. So Remina and those close to her escape fearing for their lives. And most of the manga is Remina trying to get away from all these people. As there's a rumor that spread that Remina and her father called forth for this planet. It seems like such a ridiculous statement. But when panic spreads across a country, all sorts of idiotic opinions are formed and people go along with it. Wouldn't you agree? Well, this mob mentality, and the fact that these citizens take over news broadcasts to spread this message of fear, all sorts of chaos breaks loose. The professor is elsewhere monitoring the planet. So yeah, stuff like this is why I love Ito. He isn't overly graphic, but finds a good balance with his own spin, of course. So this cult-like gang with pointed hoods using crosses? Something familiar about all of this. And then we see this, perhaps some sort of allusion to Jesus Christ. So whenever Ito explores these space-related horror, it's usually influenced by H.P. Lovecraft. I mean, he has stated numerous times to be influenced by him. The imagery on Remina, yeah, that's Lovecraftian for sure. But in many other ways, it's more absurd than what you would find in Lovecraft. This futuristic landscape is a bit different than what we'd usually see in, say, something like a cyberpunk story. It kind of reminds me of the old western cartoon depictions of the future, like Looney Tunes or the Jetsons. These government-controlled spacecrafts resemble weather balloons. Back in the 50s, when people claimed to have seen UFOs in the sky, they were often told that they were simply just weather balloons, so that's a nice little throwback. I do like Ito's depiction of fame, and a bit of the horror that comes along with it. How often do you hear of these stories involving celebrities with obsessed fans? The fame gets to many of these celebrities, not to mention obsessed fans are pretty demented at times. It makes you wonder if Ito himself has ever dealt with obnoxious fans because I'm pretty sure he's explored this theme in other stories as well. It is a longer story than we've seen in the short story compilations, but it's not as long as Uzumaki or Tomie. The story does have a lot of bizarre twists, and well, none of it is really ever plausible. It's kind of a wild ride that you just go along with. All of the odd imagery and allusions are different than with most of Ito's works, but the story itself isn't very captivating. It's hard to top the likes of Tomie, but I would recommend Lovecraft fans to check it out since there seems to be a bit of a crossover between the fan bases. The absolute mass destruction found in Remina is overwhelming, but I was left with more questions than answers, and those twists, there does seem to be a lot of loopholes, 
that just makes this entire story so odd. It's one where I certainly appreciate the art, more so than what's going on between these characters. But that's how I feel. What did you think of it? By the way, Jason's is working on a rather fascinating video about Maro Suihiro's The Laughing Vampire. He's taking a look at all the references found throughout the manga, so we've kind of been collaborating on that, so I'll be featured in his video on it, so please check it out in the future. <laughs>